Well, hey folks, my name is Brad. This is my friend, Greg. Hello. If you've been watching my channel for the last two years or so, you probably recognize Greg. He discovered a over 100 year old bottle dump on his land. He's invited me six times now to dig giant holes and find the treasures underneath the ground. At the end of the last trip here, I dug a test hole in an area way far away from where we were doing the most of our digging. And it was wild how many bottles came out of that one tiny little hole. So we're gonna start digging there today. See and what see what find. happens. See what happens. Now, this is one of the first of my videos that you've seen. I publish one of these every single Friday. So if you like what you see here today, consider subscribing or just come on back next week. Let's get the shovels out. Let's go. See what we can find. Well, Greg just found his very first bottle. I haven't found one yet. Syracuse, New York, the Heffron Co. Very pretty script. Heffronco. Not sure what that is, but we'll look it up. Pretty little bottle. Gotta make a keeper pile. All right, well, I just found my first little bottle. And at first when I, th when I saw it, I was like, oh, is this a doorknob? I saw this and there was a bunch of iron right here. And I said, oh, it looks like an old glass doorknob. And then I saw that it was hollow and I was oh, a weird old bulb of some kind, but no, it was an iron screw cap, just a little jar. Never found one quite like that. That's cool. First find. Okay, well, I think I have a little interesting pocket here. Right here, there's a long neck to something. And there's a square something or other over here. Oh, this one's busted. Let's see what this is. broken. Oh man, what is this? Hostetter's stomach bitters. That is a heartbreaker. That's okay. There's got to be more of these in here. That would have been crazy. It's like it's got pretty good age on it too. Well, I just got my first nice old complete bottle. French gloss. Oh, we got one of those second time. Whitmore Boston. Shoe polish, wasn't it? Shoe polish, yep. We were we were speculating what it was. Right, lipstick or no, so, yeah. not lipstick or something like that. But, yeah, like makeup of some kind. Yeah, but we now know it's um it's shoe polish. Nice old bottle, cool embossing on it. What was this? This was inside. Oh, it's the, brush. the brush. Yeah, there's the brush. Leave that in there. Yeah. It must have been attached to a cap yeah, of some kind. Yeah. No surprise. Awesome. That's a beauty though. Is the top, top chipped? No, nothing no? wrong. John Wyatt, bro. Weird top on it, huh? Yeah. That might be my favorite of the day. That's a beauty. Yeah. Something just fell out of the wall here. Almost like a candy dish lid. All there, unchipped. Must have broken the bottom half. And had no use for the lid. Got any candy dishes that need lids, Greg? No. <laughs> well, now we just gotta find a suitable bottom for it. Well, I have a big, brown, rectangular shaped bottle here. And I already kind of rubbed off the top of it and I can see that there's embossing. So we're gonna try to, well, maybe we can just pull it out. Sure. Is it complete? Oh yeah. Father John's. Oh. Lowell Mass. Pity the poor kids that had to drink that. A lot of viewers were saying that they remember drinking it. Yeah. 1950s probably. Yeah. This is much older than 1950s, but there was probably a paper label on this side and then on the other side. Father John's, we, we were talking about earlier, most of the bottles we find are either laxatives or for stomach pains. Right. Greg said, oh yeah, they're having a hard time getting the food down in their stomach and then and they have a hard time getting back it out. What's 
Sloan's liniment. I'm guessing for your back. Really? I could use this. Oh, opium uh, this then. This afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> probably morphine and cocaine. <laughs> that's all that's on there, huh? Sloan's liniment. Yeah. That's a nice one. I oh, know there's something at the bottom. Made in USA. Yeah. All right, we have the rectangular bottom of something here. Appears to be totally complete. Does have embossing. It is a foss. Oh. <laughs> we say that jokingly because we have found so many of oh, these yeah. fruit extract here. We're always hoping for like a quack medicine, but more than often it's a, it's a boss. That's okay. Well, down here in the clay, we have the edge of a, looks like a medicine bottle, but I did just find a foss right there. So it might be another one. I've got to do some digging to get it out. Loose. Oh no, this is different. Vegetable. Davis. Just says vegetable on it. Oh no, here we go. Painkiller. So we just looked it up. The vegetable was opiates and alcohol. <laughs> and maybe some carrot juice or something else thrown in. Um, but yeah, painkillers, right? All natural. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this bottle to be washed and returned. It's an illegal no. bottle you're holding right there. They were supposed to return that. Yep. <laughs> they kept it and tossed it. I think it's like a half pint. Yeah, it's pretty small. I wonder if it's just cream. Yeah, it could be. Well, hopefully you can see that. There is a square sided bottle. It seems to be pretty big. Here it comes. Holy smokes. Look at this thing. Oh my God. M. Salzman Co. Looks like a whiskey. Better watch it, it's still got whiskey in it. <laughs> That is awesome. Capacity one full quart, purity above all. I don't think it's very pure. <laughs> Not anymore. That's an awesome looking bottle. Well, I was digging down in here where the clay meets the ash and I saw a little circle up in here. I grabbed a hold of it, a bottle popped out. Baker's Extract Company, Springfield, Mass. Indian root beer extract. We had found other root beers in the past, root beer extracts, but they were buyers. Buyers. Same shape of the bottle. Yeah. Oh. Wonder yeah. if they did that to. Oh yeah, competition. Piggybacking off the design. Yep. Probably even the same color label. Nice. I thought that was a Vaseline that you had in your hand. I thought it was too until I started looking at the, the bottom of it, which I thought was the bottom. This cup holds a heaping dessert spoonful. <laughs> and I'm not sure of what. It's graduated. Around the top. Oh, I didn't see that. Why would it be graduated around the top like that? Interesting, anyway. Yeah. It just gets weirder and weirder. <laughs> it does keep getting weirder and weirder. Um, so the f was it the first trip we were here? We found a bunch of bottles from Vermont, which honestly is what I'm always looking for. Something like really local, 
quack medicine if possible, but if it says Vermont on it, that gets me really excited. We did find a couple pharmacy bottles by a PD Kinney from Poultney, Vermont last time, and I just found this fragment. Look, Vermont. Unfortunately, it's just a piece of it. I looked around, I couldn't find any more of it, and, but it's the biggest. Right, the other one we found was real small. Like this big, right? Yeah, maybe four inches tall. This would have been a nice size bottle. Unfortunately, broken. But that means they're in here. Old local sodas, drugs, See if that one's whole or not. It's got a weird shape to it, almost like that tea that we found in the test bowl. That's what it is. Atlantic and Pacific Tea Co. Oh, yeah. The great, the great Atlantic. Still full of tea. On that. Yeah. Well, we have a bottle coming out that is dark blue. I think that's blue. Is it whole? Feels like it might be. Definitely. It's uh, milk of magnesia. Look at that. Cass Phillips. Kind of a common bottle, but it's big and blue, unbroken. I'm happy. Never found one that big. Usually they're like half that size. Yeah. Or smaller. Screw top, but that's okay. That is okay. Great find. What's the name on it? Gordon's Dry Gin, London, England. Wow. That's a nice one. It's got a little blue color to it. Yeah. There's even a little gin left in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not quite sure that's gin. There's, is there something written on the bottom, something embossed, if you can look without? Yeah, I'll spill the gin. Looks like maybe an elk or something. An elk? Well, it looks like horns, but it could be a squid. Yeah, no, it looks like there's water down here and there's like a mouth with a tongue hanging out and these long antenna. I don't think Nessie has antenna, so. Uh, if you look at it that way. Big one too. Yeah, and not broke or chipped. So we find these Pond's cream jars, cold cream jars, all the time. We found half a dozen or more last time we were here. And there's never any brands on them, occasionally Pond's but there's usually never embossing on them. But this one actually still has its screw top. The Abner Bryce Co. Cleveland with a trademark in the center. I think there's gold coins inside. There never is. Can't get the lid off, it's rusted on. But that's interesting, I've, we've never found a brand on these. Probably it's good. had cocaine in it. <laughs> Everything has cocaine in it. Everything did. Half of these bottles had cocaine in them. So we're flabbergasted right now because we were just kind of going through some of the bottles that we found today and we're looking, we're admiring the Wyeth Bros blue bottle and how interesting the top was. And around the rim right here, it says take next dose at, at around, the, around the bottle. And it reminded me of the cap, the dessert cap that has numbers on it upside down and wouldn't you believe it, they fit, and we just Googled it, and they do actually go together. But you didn't find them. No, I found them maybe an hour apart. That's crazy. Master treasure hunter. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, I mean, it's possible there were multiple bottles and caps in the dump, and you just happened to find one of each but we've never found one of the, either of those things before. No, this is the first for both. Awesome. Now it's definitely getting displayed in the house. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm at that point of the day where I'm saying one more bottle and then we'll pack up. 
I've been saying it a while. <laughs> but I think maybe we found it here. Right here is a bottle with embossing along the side of it. It's very fancy cursive writing. Not broken. <laughs> Castoria. Castor oil. Sold as medicine. I'll take that as the last bottle. Full of bubbles. Old medicine. Put them with the rest of them here. Now I no more just shut off the camera. I said, you know, I'm just gonna just gonna check a little bit more in that spot to see if there's more. And Greg said, yes, of course. Good there's lot. another one. Right here. The bottom poking out. Looks like another little medicine. Huh. No embossing on it, unfortunately, but see, double check. It was the last bottle, but you had to double check. That's like, right. that rule supersedes the last bottle rule of double checking. Right. But now, it's like found another one. your hole when you metal tech. Exactly. But now since I found another one, I have to triple check. <laughs> Well, it's the end of the day, and the bottles that we did find, especially that Wyeth Brothers bottle that you found, that incredible. Cool. The fact that you found uh, both yeah. pieces. For a two-part bottle that yeah. we didn't find at the same time? Right. That, that was amazing. Crazy. We have them all laid out over here. Let's go take a look at them. Starting at the bottom right, we have two different sized A&P tea bottles. Father John's, a couple shoe polishes, Castoria, the painkiller, full of vegetable painkiller, which we discovered is just... <laughs> Another <laughs> word of pain, cocaine. Cocaine, yeah, or... exactly. A root beer, up a little higher, a couple more Foss. A few bottles that are very pretty, but don't have any embossing on them whatsoever. Three milk of magnesia, a couple broken bottles that I thought were honorable mention. Might as well put them up there. A candy dish topper. Gordon's Dry Gordon's. Gin. Dry gin from England. From yeah, that's right. From it's imported. And then the the best find of the day, I'm saying, that you found both of these pieces right. separately. And we decided that it actually has nothing to do with dessert. It's just referring to the size of the spoon that it is equivalent to a dessert spoon. Right. Full. Like a tablespoon. Right. Exactly. All right, folks. Well, thanks again for watching, and thanks again to Greg for letting me dig holes on his land. Oh, it was a good time. I hope you folks enjoyed watching that. If you want to see the entire playlist, you can find it down at the bottom of the main Green Mountain Metal Detecting YouTube page. And hopefully, I'll see you next week for another adventure somewhere up in the mountains of Vermont. Yeah.